Okay. Our next laugherism. At your own risk. Come on. They say the early bird gets the worm. Which means the even earlier worm just gets eaten. This is why I never get up early. I don't like everyone here. I'm not going to point fingers. I'm just kidding. Lots of love. Lots of love. Um, next up, we have Michael, who is here somewhere. Michael! Michael Healy. So the dashing man in red is Excelsior. I don't know, how do you say this? Excelsior. Excelsior. Is that a Microsoft <laughs> Excelsior. Okay, nice. Um, face front, true believers. Hailing from frozen ways of Owen Sound comes a comic writer, novelist, poet, Otaka. Otaka, geek. It's good that you can be proud of that. And general all-around nerd. Da da da. Michael Healy. How are you all doing tonight? Woo! Yay! Pretty good. All right. Well, I'm gonna start off with uh, with a piece about what it takes to be a writer. Cause I mean, we're all everyone who's up here tonight's a writer, and well, let's. Do this. <laughs> so, first thing you need is a tenuous grip on reality. But not too tenuous, you still gotta write about it. You have to have more than a, li more than a little determination. And twice that, in desperation. You have to have the sense that nothing is ever complete enough. You gotta read everything, you never know Never know who you might need to rip off next. <laughs> Experience the ups, downs, wins, losses, successes, failures. At least if you want to write what you know. But try to limit the losses, downs, and failures. You still need to eat. You need to have at least one mental, political, so or social quirk. You know, give the people something to remember, remember you by. It'll most likely drive them nuts up. The most important thing to be, you need to be a writer. So you have to have the complete, utter inability not to. <laughs> now, as I'm, as you heard in the intro, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a geek. Well, more than a little. To the geek. point. Here's the geek. <laughs> <laughs> well, as part as a geek, naturally, this means I love superheroes. Yeah, superheroes. <laughs> and I'm enough of a geek that I actually wrote a poem about them. <laughs> so let's go into that. In brightest day, in blackest night, the bird, the plane, the Superman takes flight. But we don't have that anymore, do we? Decimation, registration, annihilation, and wars? R.I.P. Batman and the Fallen Sun. Do the heroes fail us, or do we fail them? Deconstruction, reconstruction, retcons, nostalgia, and gore? They may be super, but their gods are only human. There were probably only about like three of you in the audience in the audience who actually understood what I said there. Hey! <laughs> All right, do we got time for one more? Okay, I got I got one more little piece here. This is a piece looking back from when I was a wee little wee little lad when I when I lived in. I lived in Scarborough too with. We <laughs> got a lot of Scarborough out here today, don't we? I mean, I thought we were supposed to be from Parkdale, but I mean, we seem to be on the opposite side of town. Okay, so. The hands of time had pulled apart my parents' love, and now at long last they sought the love of myself and Stephanie Papoutsis. Or rather, my borderline of 
obsessive infatuation with a girl I hardly knew. I was in grade, I was in grade five, what do you want? In my infinite naivety, none of that mattered. As sure as I was that the walls of Cornell Junior Public School would stand to the end of time, so was I that our love would survive the distance between Toronto and Owen Sound. As well as the walls between truth and fantasy. My confession came towards the end of my time in the domain of Scarberia. With the passage of seven planetary rotations, I would be forced from my home and into the confines of an apartment on the other side of the lakes ever so great. This was my last chance to pledge my undying love to Stephanie, a message forged upon only the finest of loose leaf, and inscribed with the bluest of ink from pens claimed from the sacred classroom floor. <laughs> It was placed within the protective confines of her desk, where her most majestic eyes turned away. <laughs> Alas, despite my best efforts, my vows never reached her eyes. Not while I was present to witness her reaction at the very least. As such, I love fading into nothingness forevermore. Okay, Emily was just off saying, like, oh yeah, it's also International Women's Day. <laughs> it's International Women's Day! <laughs> and, I know that, and I know that to each one of us that means something different. I know that half of you guys just found that out today was International Women's Day. Um, we actually have some really good pieces, I think, in and amongst the, uh, our, our crew about, about women to kind of celebrate the, the spirit of Woman, womanhood, um, the female power and presence. So look forward to that. Next up, we have Lucy, the real Lucy Power, not the other Lucy Power that we mentioned a time ago. Lucy, give me a sec. Let me give me a second. <clears throat> Lucy will present two short. Can I say this in an accent? Only well, if you pull it off. <laughs> Tough crap. Lucy Cooper will present two short poems from an artist who special in a different way. <laughs> All right, you did it. Thank you, Clinton's and Harper. All right, I am the much talked about Liz Cooper. Disappointing, I know. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Anyway, hi everybody. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you. I'm still disappointed about the non-existence of Disneyland Russia, so this may reflect my deep sorrow. <laughs> okay, it's there should be a Disneyland in Russia. There should. Russia would be so much happier. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> That's true. Not much can make Russia happier. Anyway, my first poem is called "Then and Now." I once had hands, I once had feet, I had eyes and hair and toes and was a person. I don't know what I am now. I cry, but I can't. I can't even scream. A woman comes by sometimes and writes things down. I'd stop her if I could, ask her what I am. I was human now. Or, I was human once. Now I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> um, my second poem does not have a name and is vaguely womanist, entirely by accident. I did not know it was International Women's Day, but hey, it works out. Um, all right. Strong, scary, scarred, soldier. A powerful woman, they ask about pink. She's seen more red in her life. She's a warrior, but all that matters is she's also a woman. Her heels are boots. Her bows are bombs. Her pretty is handsome. Her life is death.
And now we will have a short interlude presented to you by the by the art bar in Clifton. Um, and they have some samples, raffle prizes, and a cane. Awesome. Take it away. Ziad's like kind of a natural host, isn't he? Yeah. You, you see these skinny young people and you're not sure, but he's excellent. He's really excellent. Um, okay, so um, we are the Art Bar Series, and one of the things that, that helps us bring cool stuff like this to you is that we collect a bit of money from you, and then it goes right to the artists, so it's all good. Um, and I brought up the cane, not because I need it really for effect, because I'm going to now beg your sympathy and ask you for it. <laughs> Oh, seven minutes to figure out. Okay, seven minutes. Everybody's supposed to. And while people take seven minutes to figure out what they're going to do, or two minutes to figure out what they're going to do with five minutes, because that's what it'll end up being, I'm um, going to read you another laphorism right before we get to the music. A friend in need is a friend that's usually really clingy. All right, enjoy. Enjoy.